little industry where we're selling decorative horses and they cost us two dollars each if we price them at ten dollars we sell on average two hundred dollars a day if we get a little more bold with our pricing and we price them at eighteen dollars we sell only about hundred and twenty a day so we're trying to figure out what price we should set them in order to maximize our profits. So we're trying to maximize profit and profit is revenue, what we take in, minus our cost. So we know that when we're pricing them at $10, we're selling approximately $200 per day. When we're pricing them higher at $18, we're selling approximately $120 per day. We can assume that the relationship between price and quantity is close enough to be in a straight line that we're going to use that in our model. So I want to find the equation of the line that would go through these two points. So the slope of our line will be output minus output, so 200 minus 120 over input minus input, so 10 minus 18. 200 minus 120 is 80 and 10 minus 18 is negative 8, that gives me a slope of negative 10. I need to find the y-intercept of my line, so I can pick either point. I think I'll go with this point. I know that the output is 200 when the input is 10, so that gives me the equation 200 equals negative 10 times 10 plus my y-intercept or 200 equals negative 100 plus my y-intercept. If I add 100 to both sides, I get 300 for the y-intercept value. Therefore, my demand equation is Q for quantity equals negative 10 times price plus 300. So that's the relationship between the price I set and the quantity I sell. Revenue is price times quantity. So it's the price I set times how many I sell. So P times Q with Q replaced with negative 10 times P plus 300. That will be my revenue. Then I want to subtract my cost. We said the little horses cost $2 each. So 2 times our quantity. So remember our quantity is still negative 10 P plus 300. That gives me my profit. Revenue minus cost is profit. Cleaning that up a little bit, P times negative 10P is negative 10P squared. P times 300 is 300P. Careful here, I'm subtracting, and this first term is negative, so that'll become positive 20P. And then distribute the negative to the 300, so negative 2 times 300 is negative 600. So my profit is negative 10p squared plus 320p minus 600. And we want to maximize our profit. We know in calculus that a maximum will occur where the derivative is zero, where your slope is zero, and where your graph is concave downward. So we want to find a point where the derivative is zero and our curve is concave downward. The derivative of negative 10p squared will be negative 20p. The derivative of 320p is 320. And the derivative of a constant is 0, so the negative 600 is a constant, so it's 0. I want the derivative to be 0, so I set derivative equal to 0. And we're going to solve that for the variable p. So I subtract 320 from both sides. And then I want to divide by negative 20. And that gives me a price of $16. So it looks like if I price them at $16, I'll maximize my profit. Let's find how many will actually sell at that price. So remember, quantity was negative 10 times price plus 300, so negative 10 times 16 is negative 160, negative 160 plus 300 is 140, so I'll sell 140 per day 
if I price them at $16. That will give me a profit then of negative 10 times price squared plus 320 times price minus 600. So negative 10 times 16 squared is 256 plus 320 times 16 is 5,120 minus 600 gives me a profit of 1,960 per day because I'm selling 140 per day at a price of $16 each. Notice the second derivative, so the derivative of the derivative is constant negative 20, so it's negative. A negative second derivative means your graph is concave down and remember we wanted concave down with a zero derivative and those points were where your graph, your original function is hitting a maximum.